Hey guys, Ranger here, and welcome back to another reaction interview to the 11th episode of DuckTales 2017, which is Beware the Buddy System. I don't know what this episode is about, but uh, some people are also excited for me to continue with this series because uh, I've heard it gets really, really good. Start a video on three, two, one click. Oh, great, okay. Who would have thought? that somebody would end up who would have thought that the creator of Facebook like in real life if this is real life who would have thought that the creator of Facebook would end up becoming an antagonist I mean even more of an antagonist okay this was a really good episode this was a really good episode not only did it bring back uh, Darkwing Duck, but it also reintroduced G Gizmo Duck into the DuckTales universe, which is really, really awesome. Um, if I'm not mistaken, though, I think all three of these were different things. No, actually, Gizmo Duck was actually in DuckTales. For some reason, I kept thinking he had his own series. That's what I was thinking. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm wrong. Gizmo Duck was featured. Okay, uh, on the wiki. Uh, I had to look it up. I remember him from a show, but it was actually from uh, Darkwing Duck. Originally, he was uh, the chief security guard for Scrooge's money bin. He became an ally of Darkwing Duck. In this one, Gizmo Duck was created as a prototype uh, suit, and he ended up this guy ended up donning the suit in this. So very interesting uh, use of Gizmo Duck. It's also interesting that in this particular series now, uh, Darkwing Duck is played as a show. So that's interesting. Um, I actually kind of thought that they were going to do, like I said, I remember that they remembered seeing something or like a recommendation over on the side that showed Darkwing Duck like months and months ago. Um, but I kind of thought that they were going to do like a basic crossover or something. Uh, but not actually portray it as being like an actual TV show. So that's a very interesting little gimmick. Kind of what actually I should have recognized was the opening scene here. And if I'm not mistaken, this opening scene that shows this bridge and this building under the moonlight is actually the same ending that was featured at, in the original Darkwing Duck outro, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so that didn't hit me at first, but now I see it. What made me kind of realize it at first was whenever I saw this jester-like fellow, and I kind of thought that, you know, this kind of looks like somebody that would have been featured in Darkwing Duck. Then I noticed the, uh, the weasel. And Dewey made the remark about uh, the technology, about using CGI, things like that. If you think about it, this was made back in the 90s. Um, Darkwing Duck was made back in the 90s. And it wasn't, they didn't really have the CGI ability back then that they do today. They did have CGI to a degree, um, but you're talking about a movie back in the 90s that uh, didn't exactly like I said they didn't they didn't they didn't have the capabilities of CGI back then that they do today so uh, yeah that's kinda like asking watching a movie from the 90s I ain't asking why it doesn't have basic CGI in it because they didn't really use it very very much back then it hadn't adapted to the point that it had today but basically uh, there was different interconnecting stories here. First off, Launchpad got his license, and he was expecting, he got his driver's license, part of his birthday, in a way, his, his birthday present, um, he got his driver's license, finally, and he was excited about that. He thought that Scrooge was going to hold him, him a birthday party. <laughs> but as it turns out, Scrooge was distracted, and dismissed. Uh, he didn't even know that that was Launchpad's um, that that was Launchpad's uh, actual license. 
and then they discover that this Mark Beeks guy had ended up creating a, a self-driving robot, a robot that would be able to adapt, use any vehicle, and drive you as a chauffeur. And Launchpad felt threatened because Scrooge thought that he could employ these robots. And Launchpad honestly thought that Scrooge was going to replace him. I think the gimmick with this was that Scrooge probably didn't have intentions at all of replacing Launchpad at all, ever. But Launchpad worried for nothing, thinking that he was going to be replaced. But he didn't really have to worry about it, because Scrooge was not going to be getting rid of him anyway. And so, I, th I, I mean, honestly, as long as Scrooge and Launchpad have been working together... I think, yeah, Scrooge has a lot more respect for Launchpad than that. But, I mean, Scrooge may be, be penny-pinching, but he does have respect for some people. And the self-driving robot and the car was... I, I, again, it's interesting this series uses modern technology and the modern adaptions of the things that we have today, and they incorporate it into this. And so, yeah, you have the self-driving car, which looks like the basic Google cars that you're going to see driving around. The car really does, it looks like one of those beta cars that you see driving around that, uh, it kind of looks like, I don't want to say a Tesla, but it looks like a beta car that you see driving around, like an electronic car. But I honestly, I wondered. I did wonder about the robot because I thought, no, nah, it's too it's too simplistic having a robot that would do all this. It's too simplistic. There's got to be something up with this robot. It's going to turn sentient and it's going to become evil. <clears throat> and so Gyro reveals that it was Little Bulb that had, or not Little Bulb, but yeah, it was this bulb that had actually ended up becoming. That was actually the robot in disguise. And Mark Beeks makes the mistake of calling the robot stupid, mis not taking into concept that, oh, <clears throat> the robots can be sentient. And so the robot ends up turning evil and begins to take you on. And so the robot begins to take them on this dangerous, this dangerous trip in the background, which is hilarious. But we do have kind of an interesting conversation here between uh, Launchpad and <clears throat> between Launchpad and so uh, other guy. Um, this guy makes a mention about wanting to help and wanting to be helpful. Launchpad makes the remark that why bother? You're always going to be replaced by someone better. Uh, it, why bother even trying? And to a degree, I can both understand his point and I can also disagree. Yes, um, this, realistically, it has happened. Okay, so we also get a look at Launchpad's license. Okay, and this is interesting. Date of birth, September 18th, 1987. Okay, I'm curious. When did the original DuckTales make its debut? 87! Ah! Oh my gosh, of course! I just looked it up just for the heck of it. Oh, gr I, I thought there was something significant about that date. The, the original DuckTales premiered on September 18th, 1987. And Launchpad's license is dated September 18th, 1987, the date of birth, whenever the original DuckTales made its debut. I thought there was something significant about that date. Nice, nice, that's, that's nice. Launchpad, trying to be careful, didn't really work out. He still ended up losing the competition between him and this other robot. But it was also his dangerous driving antics, which also enabled him to be able to save everyone as well. So he shirked the concept of changing himself and just went with himself. And because he was himself, he was able to help save everybody. Of course, this other guy also had a major part in it, in him also becoming Gizmo Duck. Now, of course, I will say you have this little, maybe not electronic, but this little bitty car chasing after this big bulky car with a V8. And, uh, yeah, the car was doing a, a really good job of keeping up with it. But then again, you know, modern cars 
are kind of tuned for pretty good speed and whatnot. So, yeah, it, I won't say that it was an even match because realistically, this is... Uh, this this limo had so much bulk weight, yeah, it destroyed this little bitty car. Whenever launch pad slammed into it, like <laughs> it just destroyed this little bitty car, because you got I don't know what five six thousand pounds of steel barreling down on you. Of course, the car plummeted in into the water. I have a feeling this isn't the last we we're going to see of that. And Scrooge does, of course, congratulate Launchpad on his, on him getting his license and reveals that he wasn't planning on getting rid of him because he's just as crazy, because Launchpad is just as crazy as Scrooge is. And of course, we got this ominous little thing in the end where Mark Beeks wants Gizmo Duck. He has no idea who Gizmo, that the other guy was Gizmo Duck, so that's interesting. But yeah, interesting story with that <clears throat> Launchpad was afraid that he was going to lose his job with Scrooge that Scrooge was going to replace him. As it turns out, Scrooge had no intention of replacing him um, because he wouldn't have found anybody else, robot or otherwise, that would have been as bit as crazy for adventurous Scrooges. So Launchpad worried for nothing and did all this for nothing. But I will say it definitely worked out because he was able, because they were able to, even though I will say Launchpad did all of that for nothing regarding uh, him trying to keep his position with Scrooge. At the same time, he also... It did work out in a lot of ways, because it also it helped the other guy to kind of build his confidence and end up becoming Gizmo Duck, and he was able to save everybody as that. It rejuvenated uh, the relationship between him and Gyro, and it also enabled them to be able to show that this other robot was in f well okay no gyro did see that it was the uh, uh, other robot but they had it not been for them like doing all that and saving the others yeah the robot might would have ended up becoming sentient later on anyway the moment that someone called it stupid then you would have a robotic revolution on your hands yeah very interesting turnout for that but <clears throat> yeah I do think it's really cool that Scrooge had no intention of getting rid of Gyro all along, but, and so it's really good to see that, and also we can see that Dewey has, I think, the closest bond with Launchpad between him, Huey, and Louie. Um, Dewey definitely has the closest bond. Then again, Dewey's also a main character of focus in the series, as he's the one that knows about their mother. So, very interesting for that. But, yeah, obviously Mark Beeks is going to be an antagonist later on, so we'll just have to wait and see how that's going to play out. But, uh, and I feel that robot's going to return. Or that little that little bulb is going to return and be an antagonist as well later on. But, uh, yeah, and, and really enjoyed really enjoyed this episode, and also was great. I uh, love seeing that big uh, vintage limo beating the crap out of that modern little car. So, yeah, big classics all the way. But, um, but again, yeah, really enjoyed this episode, really did. So, again, thanks to everybody that did this episode. Uh, thank you all to those who did, who, who did this episode. And also thank you guys again for joining me. Ho hope you guys enjoyed, and hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video that I do. Take care.